Armenia, the little country at the crossroads of history's largest empires, and a place I felt compelled to go to in 2021. What was Armenia like for a total foreigner like me? Today, I'm bringing you with me all the way back to the beginning of my journey, and we're going to find out. Hi and welcome to My Armenian Summer Journey, a series about the people, places, cuisine, and the lessons that I learned while living abroad in Armenia. Today, I'm sharing with you the sights, the delicious meals, and some of the conversations that I had during my first week there. But first, I want to share the very beginning of my journey. Thinking back, the seed of my desire to go started with a girl. It was dating that first introduced me to Armenian culture. I got to taste delicious, exotic foods and experience the hospitality and the liveliness that are synonymous with Armenian culture. Some years later, I began to notice reports about Armenia proper, that the country was going in a positive direction and that there were even opportunities for foreigners there. So I watched videos and read these reports that would catch my attention, but I would not think much beyond them. However, that ended with the outbreak of war. In 2020, Azerbaijan attacked the independent Armenian Republic of Artsakh, a development that captivated my attention. Keeping up with the war was difficult because of a lack of news coverage, so I exerted a lot of effort in trying to find updates. Also, at that time, I was coping with the end of a more recent relationship, so I channeled all of the emotional energy that I had into the situation in Artsakh, trying to understand the conflict and hoping for and praying for peace. By the end of 2020, after the war, the attention that I was placing on understanding the situation there, in addition to my prior fondness and knowledge of Armenian culture, all coalesced into this strong desire within me to be in Armenia. And I fully committed to that feeling. I bought a plane ticket to go on New Year's Day 2021. I started taking language lessons, and on July 24th, after quitting my job, I jumped on that plane to chase that desire within me halfway around the world. On my flights there, I had a couple of conversations that touched on themes I would see recur throughout my journey in Armenia. First, I spoke with an Italian gentleman on the seat next to mine about life philosophies. We touched upon the idea that it takes struggle and adversity to mature and ultimately to thrive. I explained to him that, in my view, despite the loss of the war, Armenia was in a position to overcome its issues and that would be the seed of a brighter future there. On my second flight, I talked to an Armenian art student who seemed perplexed by my optimism for the country. She told me that her peers would rather leave and live in more developed countries than to stay in an uncertain place like Armenia. But she did confess that she shared my optimistic outlook and was committed to building a brighter future there. These concepts about struggle and adversity between optimism and pessimism would surface again and again in my conversations in Armenia, where we're finally about to get to next. I arrived in the capital city of Yerevan with very little planned. I had one contact, a tour guide that my Armenian language instructor had recommended to me, and I had read one book called Omni Local Yerevan all about how to live in the city. As I arrived, I purchased a local SIM card at the airport, downloaded the Yandex Go Taxi app, and then was on my way to go discover this whole new world. What follows are the raw thoughts that I wrote about my impressions of Yerevan, Armenia during my first few days there. What a wonderful first few days in the city of Yerevan. 
I woke up at 4 a.m. and finished my morning meditations at 4.46, after which I left to walk the city center. It was an incredible experience. The 24-hour Caras restaurant near the corner of Tumanian Street was brimming with a crowd of ruckus night owls fueled by Armenian coffee. City custodians had begun sweeping the city's public spaces, and an occasional straggler or stray pack of dogs made up the rest of the pre-dawn inhabitants of Yerevan. Despite the activity, compared to the daytime, the city felt completely dormant. During the working hours, the buildings and parks here become a backdrop to the hustle of the city crowds, whose collective energy dominated the forefront of my sensations on my first day here. However, during these dawn hours, the beauty of the city center is unobstructed, and the fading night lights rebounding off Yerevan's famous pink buildings contrast with the emerging shadows as the sun rises, creating a unique blend of shades and colors that nearly overwhelm my sense of sight. Truly, there is nowhere else in the world that can match this. After these first few days, I checked out of my city center hotel and checked into an Airbnb deep in one of the local neighborhoods. I wanted to stay with locals for an extended period so that I could practice some of the language skills that I had been working on. Although I don't think I improved much, I definitely learned to operate Russian appliances there. Here are the thoughts that I wrote down in my travel journal about the experience living in the neighborhood. My home is in North Marash, a hillside neighborhood in Northeast Yerevan. It was a patchwork of beautifully renovated homes and dilapidated shacks alongside occasional abandoned structures and lots with government buildings randomly interspersed and ongoing infrastructure renovations along the street. In a way, the neighborhood felt like a microcosm of a country with limited resources, struggling against the odds to simultaneously survive, modernize, and create prosperity wherever possible among the ruins of the past. Despite the imperfection, I've cherished my stay in North Marash. I had a close view of the Yerevan TV tower. My hosts were very kind, and I kept in shape by hiking the hill to the city center daily, where I spent the rest of my week eating my way through some of Yerevan's most tasty restaurants. Let's check out some of the food that I ate during my first week in Yerevan. The first place I visited appeared on the guidebook I read, as well as on many YouTuber recommendations. It's a beautiful restaurant called Lavage. Lavash is also the word for an Armenian flatbread, so I made sure to order some of that for breakfast here. I had their trout wrapped in lavash bread and the most scrumptious beef crepes you'll ever taste. That dipped in Armenian yogurt made me feel like I had arrived in heaven. As I ate, I heard a mixture of Armenian and English chatter behind me, so I struck up a conversation with the couple that was sitting there. It happens that they were from Los Angeles, just like me. And the woman also made YouTube videos. She told me about her cooking channel called Eat with Gassia, where she shows how to prepare and make Armenian traditional home dishes. I asked them for some recommendations for the rest of my week before ending our friendly exchange. Now here's a little taste of what the other restaurants in Yerevan had to offer during my first week there. For my first Saturday night, I went to one of Gassia's recommendations. 
Rio Bar at the end of Yerevan's nightlife-filled Pushkin Street. Rio had a lively bar with a ton of delicious looking drinks. I was surprised to see that they stocked Coronas there. So I had one of those and experienced the strange sensation of having something so familiar and Latin American in a place so foreign for me at the same time. While I had a few drinks, I got to know the cashier at the bar and got to know his story and his outlook on the future. He was originally from Syria and had fled the civil war that started there a few years ago along with other Syrian Armenians and settled into Yerevan to lead a new life. However, in his view, the prospects here were not very good either. After suffering through war-torn Syria and now seeing Armenia lose a war at its doorstep, well, to him, it felt like he was getting a very clear message to get out. He planned to finish his medical studies in Yerevan, save up some money, and then leave to Western Europe. This was disheartening to hear for me because he seemed like the studious, driven young person, the type that Armenia needs in order to continue developing. But with the bloodshed that he has seen throughout his young life, I couldn't help but to empathize with his desire to follow his own gut feeling to go elsewhere. And I also understood at a personal level what that art student on my flight had told me about the pessimism among some of Armenia's young people. In positive contrast, the servers that I spoke with had lived in Yerevan all their lives and their families had been here for generations since the time of the Soviet Union through the post-Soviet poverty-stricken independence in the early 90s. They had seen Yerevan change into this wonderful cosmopolitan city during their lifetime and they could think of no better place to be except for here, a sentiment that was closer to what I was feeling. So regardless of these different points of view, I had a great time at Rio Bar. I said bye to my new friends there and I went on my way to start a new week in my summer journey in Armenia. The next day, I spoke with a travel guide that I mentioned earlier. His name is Vladimir Grigorian. He offered to host me at his village home in one of Armenia's northern provinces, but there was a catch. It was under construction and I wouldn't have the comforts of the big city anywhere near. To me, that sounded like the perfect place to continue this Armenian summer journey. So that's where we're going on my next episode, to the little mountain village of Deset, where his five-year-old twins will attempt to teach me a little more Armenian, where I'll get to know some of the elder village people, and also where, out of left field, I get the idea to host a Japanese anime movie premiere event back in Yerevan. All of this on my next episode of My Armenian Summer Journey. Thank you for watching, like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.